going? I got I got two for one. I'm I'm gonna no, get you. He's afraid to be seen with me. No, I'm gonna get you I'm guys. I'm freaking on him. He's afraid to be seen with me. I'm gonna get you guys me. both. No, he's you know. Kind of jumping on the camera. Oh, I see. oh man, let me. Doctor, right? Yeah. What's your earliest memory in this life? My earliest memory is being taken to the racetrack by my father, and being amazed by the the sound that these horses made and the movement of air, uh, and that just made me fall in love with them. And I told my father, I guess I was eight or nine years old. Dad, I want to own one of these things and ride it. Because my father used to take me to Coney Island and give the guy a nickel when I was young, and he would hold me and walk around the track. And then when my father had some money, he gave him a quarter so I could have five trips around the track. Wow. The pony track in Coney Island where wow. I grew up. And you said something about Jamaica racetrack. Yeah, Jamaica racetrack, I was wanting to be a, a jockey because I was 4'11". I did 97 pounds in my early teens. Yeah. Uh, but one of the guys there said, uh, son, you're going to grow and you're not going to make it. So you better look for another career. So I lasted one summer and then I graduated high school, went to college and I discovered beer. And then all of a sudden there I'm going, growing from 4'11 to 5'8 and I weighed over 240 pounds. Oh, so I cursed that man that was right. <laughs> and you know, right throughout the years, what's your favorite moment? My favorite moment in this life right here. In horse, racing. in horse racing. In horse racing is that my wife loved it as much as I did after she got on board with the fact that I loved horses. Right. And as partners together, we just had so many great memories and so many wonderful things that the horses have given us. Yeah. It, and you know, right, who's the best jockey you ever seen ride a horse? Angel Cadero, without a doubt. The man was an athlete beyond expectations. And I once recommended the purchase of a horse called Maple Jinsky. And she won the Alabama, and I swear to God, he carried her over the finish line. Because at the end of that mile and a quarter, she was kind of tired. And you know, right, the name of my program is The Real Players Inside the Backstretch. And you've been around a long, long time, right? How important is the men and women that do this job day in, day out? Without the backstretch employees, this game would not be able to take place. Yeah. They are essential. They are horsemen extraordinaire. They love their horses. They care for them as if they were their own children. And without these people, we wouldn't have this game. What makes a good groom, in your opinion? What makes a good groom is one that pays attention to the little intricacies and body language of the horse. Yeah. That tips them off to what's going on in their mind and also physically. And if that groom is in tune to his horse, he can solve the tra a lot of problems before they even ar arise. And that's essential for a trainer, to have someone that has good eyes, hands, that knows how to touch a horse and, and make determinations. And uh, Mr. Ferrara, who was a mentor for you when you first got started? Besides my father, Alan Jerkins. You know, I've been interviewing so many people. Alan Jerkins, right, name come up so many times. This guy is so Phenomenal special. Phenomenal horseman. And you know, what, why, what made Alan Jerkins special? Well, he cared so much about the horses. And he cared so much about the people that were involved with the horses. Yeah. He helped out more people from the backstretch than anybody you could imagine. Yeah. And you know, what's the biggest difference from the game yesterday versus today? Wow. Uh, I would say the, the domination of syndicates as opposed to individual ownership and the domination of several trainers that get the best blood stock you know, from the sale because they have the owners that have the money. Yeah. And so the little guy is under a lot of pressure to compete and stay alive in the game yeah, as yeah. compared to before where there was lots of little individual stables and private stables, but, but not the way it is organized. How important is the men and women every day that, that, that do this job? Oh, they're very important. And I have a worker that's been with me over 30 years. He's like a family to me. Yeah. And what's his name? Uh, Jose Vieira. Jose Vieira. He's a groom. He's a groom. And now I have his nephew working for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you have met him. Oh, yes, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, that's that. He's a good kid. Yeah, and he's actually taking care of my horse right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he takes care of the Sanctuary City, who's now stakes place, and a, a wonderful horse. Who's the best jockey you ever seen ride a horse? <laughs> oh, well, I, I saw Cadero ride, too, but there's so many of them that are very talented. Yeah. Chris Antley comes to mind. He had a very short career, but he was excellent. You know Tuba? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he said Chris Antley. A lot of people have been mentioning Chris Antley oh. lately. As wow. a, as a, as That's a, amazing, yeah. You know, even though he passed on kind of right, early, but right, they yeah. said 
He had hands, man. And you know what? what what's the what's the motivation to keep you coming back? Oh, the love love of the animals. Yeah. And then secondary is the competition. Yeah. We're, we're like a big family here, but we're very competitive also.